Hey guys, this is Aina from We Learn to Share. In this video, we're going to cover this question from Physics in Chapter 8, Rotational Motion. And let's read the question. So, the tire of a car makes 75 revolutions as the car reduces its speed uniformly from 95 km per hour to 55 km per hour. The tires have a diameter of 0.8 um, zero meters. And because all of the time you're going to use the radius, not the diameter. You should. You could. It is better if you write that the radius would be half of the diameter, which is zero point four zero meters. Having that so, uh, we're gonna figure out first a. What was the angular acceleration of the tire? So let's solve for a first. We're gonna figure out the angular acceleration. And this is the case when the tire was reducing its speed from ninety five kilometers per hour to fifty five kilometers per hour, right? And over here, we're gonna use the formula. Omega square equals initial omega square plus two alpha theta, right? And remember that omega, which is the angular velocities, would be found from the velocity, linear velocity, divided by the radius. Yeah. So if we actually organize this formula with alpha being on the left side, it would be omega square minus omega zero square over two theta, right? And if we substitute this value into this formula, it would be v over r square minus v initial over r square into theta. And this would be something like this. So, like this. And because this is the same as one, uh, one, 2 theta over 1, we're going to put and organize this formula into in this way, right? So this would be the how your formula would look like if you simplify this formula. And now we're going to substitute the values into this formula, which would be uh, the v square would be final velocity, which is 55 kilometers per hour. So this square minus initial would be 95. So it would be 95 kilometers per square per hour square. And then you need, because you need to convert the units, you're going to write 1 meter per second over 3.6 kilometers per hour. And you need to square this also because uh, all the values over here is squared. So the units also should be squared following that. And then you will have 2 um, r square, which is 0 0.4 and meter, and you're going to have square. And then theta would be 75 revolutions. And we need to convert that by multiplying 2 pi radians, radians over revolution. If you put these values and solve it by your calculator, you're going to have something that is uh, equal to minus 3.070 radius per uh, second square. And your A step is done. And let's see the next question. B, how much more time is required for it to stop? And the time to stop can be found from using this formula. Omega equals omega zero, so omega initial plus alpha t, with a final angular velocity of zero because I said that the curve had stopped, right? So the final velocity, final angular velocity would be zero. And then if you organize this formula with having t on the left, it will be t equals omega minus omega initial over alpha. And because omega equals v over r we're gonna substitute these this v over r um, value into omega and it will be something that is like or omega or alpha v minus v v initial and if we substitute the values the like the radius and speed from 55 kilometers per hour to zero kilometers per hour which is the final ve angular velocity it would be this would be zero and you're gonna have minus 55 kilometers per hour as your initial velocity and you're gonna also convert the units into one by multiplying um one meter per second over 3.6 kilometers per hour and for over here we're gonna have 0 0.4 meters and alpha as this which we have computed in step a Square. 
So if you put these values into your calculator and calculate it, there will be the answer would be 12.44 seconds, which is equal to um, 12 seconds. Now let's move on to the last step, which step which is finding uh, how far it will go. Over here, we need to divide this part into two parts. And we first need to find the total angular displacement of the tires as they slow from the 55 kilometers per hour to rest. Okay, so this value would be found by omega square equals omega initial square plus 2 alpha and zeta. And if you organize this formula, it would be zeta equals 2 alpha and then this. And then remember, because omega equals v over r, it would be 2 alpha and the final angular velocity would be 0. So this would be 0. And then we're only going to have to put the values like this. And if we uh, substitute all the values we've got from step a and b, the alpha being this. And the r being 0 0.4. And the v0 being 55 kilometers per hour. And then computing the values like this. And you're going to have the total value of it being squared. And then if you compute this value on your um, calculator, it'll be something that is equal to 237.6 radians. And remember that this is not the end because we're trying to find the total angular displacements, right? And we need to uh, convert that angular displacement, this angular displacement to linear displacements, right? So that step would require us to find delta x by uh, multiplying r to the delta theta. So this would be equal to 0 0.4 meters by multiplying it with 273.6 radians. And this would be 95 meters. And remember that this is not the end because we've only computed this value, the angular displacement and the linear displacement, uh, when the car was slowing down from 55 kilometers to the rest. But remember that from at the very first point, we speed was 95 kilometer per hour to 55 kilometer per hour and then to rest, right? So we've just found computed the value over here. And now we need to compute the value in this part. So the second part, let me just erase this. The second part would be, but a little bit more easier because um, we're going to have 95 kilometers per hour to 55 kilometers per hour. And we're going to find the angular displacement or and the linear displacement. But we already knew that the tire made 75 revolutions as it was reducing from this speed to this speed. So we're going to have delta x equals r delta or times delta theta, which will be 0 0.4 meters, and then you will have 75 revolutions, and then you're gonna multiply this for conversion, which will be equal to 188 meters. So the total distance would be some of the two distances that we've got from 95 meters and 188 meters. So the total would be 95 meters plus 188 meters, which would be equal to 283 meters. Yeah. And so, yeah, this will be the end of the video, and thanks for watching.